It's the Trainwreck Show, only on Pirate Screen Radio. Welcome to the Trainwreck Show. It's your host, Bob. We've got our couch guest slash news reporter over there, Danielle. Hello. How are we doing, Danielle? I'm good. Well, the first thing I'd like to uh, start off with here is that our uh, 26, our meth, uh, there on the um, vote for page for uh, train wreck of the year. They've all been arraigned now, so we're just waiting for them to be sentenced. And they got them all, and most of them have a 500 to $600,000 bond against them, so they'll be staying in jail. I feel so much better knowing <laughs> they've all been caught. Now... One of the things that... Uh, I mean, here, really, how do we know they've all been caught? Well, they haven't all been caught. Exactly! There were a lot of users somewhere along the way that didn't get caught. But here, here's a fun one for you. Erie is about to take a chance. They said minors can attend the eight great Tuesdays without adults. What? Yep. And they're going to go by event-by-event by event basis because they're saying they're leaving it into their hands. And they would be glad to have them on board and... Uh, you know, they're going to probably, uh, let's see, the Port Authority had considered the ban after a wristband program in 2007 did not work. <laughs> Imagine that. So they said that uh, some now, of the miners got... Now, the got, Eight Great Tuesdays, isn't that like all downtown local bars and whatnot participating? It's bands and stuff. That, that but it's bars, having sidewalk events, right? Yeah. So... I want to know who's the genius that proposed the idea to allow minors to attend. Well, it's more about getting uh, the people there so that it makes it look like it's uh, it's doing well, which we want it to do well. But you know, too many of the minors around here complain that they have to go with their parents. Well, <laughs> guess what? I had to go with my parents to a lot of things when I was a kid, and I'd really rather have gone alone too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, we're gonna. Well, what we've done is we've made a society where our parents don't have to show up for anything. You know, if you think about it, they don't show up for their kids' games anymore like they used to. You know, you get a handful of them. Oh, yeah. And it's just, I don't know, it's definitely deteriorating. But anyway, uh, go support your kids, too, while you're supporting the unsigned bands. <laughs> hey, ready or not, here they come. The Erie Times News headline for Saturday, June 28th. Barack Obama and Hillary are on their way to Erie. <laughs> Why are they coming? They're just saying they're sure to stop here because they are now uh, deciding to uh, unite in their uh, change campaign. So... She's pulling for them, and they're they're having a good time. Well, she together. has to pull for them. They're in the same party. I know. This is the unity now. This is what everybody's been waiting for. Okay. Did he pick? <laughs> did he pick a running mate? No. When does he have to pick a running mate? I I don't know that exactly, but. Because if they're really joining in unity, shouldn't she be the running mate? I don't know. Do you really want that kind of ticket? We don't want to talk about choosing <laughs> politicians because I don't do that. A lot of people will be very mad at me to hear my views. <laughs> and why do you believe that? Because I have very bad views. <laughs> I won't I, give. I won't give away your secret. I I don't I I don't get into the the politics. I'm sorry, and yes, shame on me. I'm one of those people that is come to the reality that. It doesn't really freaking matter who I vote for, because no matter what they say, no matter what good intentions they have, once they get in there, they get their hands tied, and they don't do half the stuff they promise us they're going to do anyway. We that's, get screwed. That's where your true unity has to come from, the Congress and the Senate, and everybody has to believe that they can all work together to make something happen. And, and that's if they, way too many people to join together. Well, it isn't that. It's that... that Charlie and I have talked about before, it's the fact that we have a two-party system, so we're, we're, it's destined to fail because you pitted one, sting, one against the other. Yep. Where if you add another one or you can get a, you know, five or six, well, guess what? Then you have a real competition where all you're doing is uniting one, one against the other. And no matter how much we hope for unity, why are they going to actually unite? Because in the end, to get the next president, it's still going to come from one of those parties. So you agree that we shouldn't have the the uh, May, April, whatever it is, to break it down to just one for each party. If they all want to run in that party, just freaking let them do it. 
No. No, that would be a Why big not? waste of money. They're wasting money anyway. Yeah, but I think it would be a bigger because they would. somebody would ask for funding. Somebody would ask for help. They'd go, I'm the unknown, so I need help. And you can only give away so much public money. I think it's ridiculous the amount of money that's used in these campaigns when you think about the original presidential campaigns out the back of a uh, a train. You know, and you and you went down to the to the railroad tracks and you and you saw your politician there and then on he went to the next stop. Where instead we, we set up these grand uh, caravans, you know, and they and they go all across the country wasting money. I think the whole thing's a big waste, but so, I told you I don't get into politics. I just I, my problem is, is where's all this money coming from? We're fighting a war that's costing billions of dollars a day or we're, we're sending out stimulus packages which has got to be costing at least a billion dollars uh, they're talking about sending out more it just is that that free money I got <laughs> that's not really free but you pretend it's free <laughs> yes that's the stimulus package. send it on my way because I'm sick and tired of when my tax return comes in that they get three quarters of my damn money and I don't see crap for it yeah that's that's half the country except for I the know, people who really make money a lot money. of people that agree with me well, what about the uh, oil prices climb as the do- as the dollar weakens? The Holy Fed crap, yeah. feared panic. So as our money becomes less valuable, gas still climbs. It's over four dollars a gallon now. It'll go higher because it, because of this weekend. They'll say the demand is up for oil, and because the demand is up, they have to charge more. Haven't they already paid for the oil we're using? Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and that's why this whole demand thing is a bunch of BS because if they can still only bring so much in then they should just keep charging the, the price because if they think they're going to run out well whose fault is that I thought there was no way they were going to push over that $4 barrier just yet no, they gotta and then get I it forgot for the 4th of that July the weekend. holiday weekend was coming and now the demand will go up or they're predicting the demand I, mean, I, I can't even imagine how you can raise it before the demand is actually there because you tell me people are using more gas right now? Not yet. No, not at this time of year. So, it's just, you know, th- let's just make sure at the end of the next quarter, I think last quarter it was like $13 billion that they made in profits. And then now they're asking the United States uh, Congress for help in uh, rebuilding their refineries. Oh, yeah, they're asking for federal money to rebuild their refineries, which they should have been rebuilding all along with their profits. They have a profit every quarter. Yep. Every quarter. And there are individuals in those companies becoming billionaires within, you know, monthly. Monthly there's another billionaire in the oil industry. So I have this funny little tidbit. It's not a big thing, but there's this little tidbit in the paper. Well, actually, in the online paper that I'm looking at. And uh, it said that the Summit Township, is it Summit Police? I don't know, Erie Police, whatever. The Yeah, the Erie County, well... The police, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you get into all these different little divisions, yeah. and it's like, okay, who's doing what? And yet they still end up at the Erie County Prison, so who the hell knows? Yep. But up in Summit Township, up at the uh, Holiday Inn Express, apparently there was a couple that stayed there for 20 nights. Okay. From June 5th to June 25th. They busted them trying to sneak out without paying their bill. Okay. They racked up over thirty-two hundred dollars in charges. Wow. Were caught, arrested. They're being charged with theft of services and criminal conspiracy to commit theft of services. <laughs> this is the kicker that I, I find. <laughs> they posted bail. They were each charged with, or their bail for each of them was five thousand dollars. Okay. And they both posted bail. Their wow. bill was thirty-two hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah. So somewhere in the math is not quite right well, there. Well, then again, if they're you and know, what the hell were you doing at the Holiday Inn Express to rack up over thirty two hundred dollars? I don't know. Do they even have room service there? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that was my little tidbit. Well, old Benjamin and Ashley. Now that we're all and 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 they're from Erie. Oh yeah. That's the they're from, from Erie, PA. <laughs> what the hell? You just need a vacation from the family. <laughs> well, how about this? Arborist. They're, oh, I caught part ticked. of that. Tell they're me what's ticked going on. about the uh, trees out at the um, Presque Isle, Isle Bay. Apparently, uh, they were blocking some views from, uh, I, I would guess, the, some of the homeowners in the area. 
and they decided to start trying to kill the uh, two maple trees that were there. And they did it, it looks like uh, almost like a piece of barbed wire and they rubbed it back and forth across until they cut into the tree. So they've given it an actual value now of $15,000 which qualifies it to be categorized as a felony. You're Me, kidding Meaning they could bring the FBI into this. Well, so. if it's on Presque Isle, it's a state park. You know what I mean? So it's gonna it's gonna raise the level from just local well, local stuff. All yeah, all I know is that somebody's not, somebody could be in a lot of trouble. Stupid. Because you know the people that it would have blocked their view. It's people that got money anyway. Yeah, I, it's, it seems a little ridiculous to go around trying to kill a tree just say so you have a better view. Okay, so here's a, a, a little funny one that I popped up here in the, the thing, and I'm bringing it up now. There is a borough that might ban couches. What, on the front porch? <laughs> the front porch and the front lawn, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Stroudsburg. Oh, my goodness, we have some rednecks. <laughs> All right. Stroudsburg, a northeastern Pennsylvania borough, is considering an ordinance that would ban couches on front porches and lawns. And it says that officials say the ban would apply to upholstered furniture that is manufactured primarily for indoor use. And <laughs> and they're claiming that the reason they're doing this is, is the fire department is concerned about safety hazards and that the borough is thinking about aesthetics, which... Pardon my ignorance, what the hell is aesthetics? The looks. That okay. it doesn't look nice. The appearance. Nice. Yes. Okay. So they're actually wasting time. They're going to hold a public hearing next month on whether or not to pass this ordinance so that if you've got a couch, an upholstered couch, on your front porch or front lawn, you're going to get fined or whatnot. And there's a gentleman that's lived there for decades. He doesn't see what it's hurting for people to have his soft recliner out on the porch where he <laughs> enjoys reading or listening to music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> that killed me. That, that's like true rednecks. Remember when we went by the one house and then, I can't remember where they have like a Ferrari in the driveway? Oh, yeah. The, and they had the, the flamingos all over the, the whole, front yep, porch the or the yards. front lawn. And, yep. and they had like this really, really weird redneck like... Uh, Mailbox. I wish to God I could remember what it was. Wasn't it like a seagull or something? Or a swan or yeah. something? Yeah, a swan. That's what it was. Yeah. Way out there. Yeah. <laughs> that was in Mer now. that was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yeah. Redneck home. Yeah. But, I mean, come on now. Seriously, you're gonna park waste? that. You're gonna park that car in the driveway. You're gonna yeah. let your house look like that. But you're gonna waste time and money to decide if an ordinance to ban couches is is something you can get past. You got nothing else to better to do well, with the taxpayers' that's, money. <laughs> do you realize I was reading um, the Erie County budget and the two hundred and eighty million dollar uh, budget for the to do list? <coughs> it makes me think of uh, what they do around here with the roads when we're driving around, and uh, like they just did this little half a cherry underneath the bridge there. They actually had cherry. Did they finish it finally? I don't know. They've had it closed off for a couple of days. But it, that's amazing to me because you know what? That was definitely not the worst road around here. Like cherry up here Upper is a cherry, hell of a yes. lot worse not than that. at the bridge area by 12th exactly. street exactly that wasn't that wasn't too bad of a i don't know that they've finished it i know that they opened it back up but it's only got the first layer so oh, you still, still got to drop bump down and a bump up yeah see that's uh, and that's my other gripe if you're going to start a project damn well finish the project because you're causing more damage to our vehicles by making us do this crap than leaving it the way it was you're before, making us use more gas the, by trying to get around these things but we knew where the potholes yeah. were before at least so we knew where to go around now you got this this crap and it's all over both sides mm -hmm. and you can't it's not just like a small section it's like here's a patch oh then we're back to regular road here's a patch then but doesn't it seems like that they go by a schedule for what the for the areas they repair and they don't do it by what area really needs to be repaired or i love it when they do do a repair and you haven't even made it six months and it's already tore up and crap again oh but that's because of the salt you know i lived in kansas for three years yeah and we got some hellacious snowstorms and i lived in south dakota for almost five years and we got some hellacious snowstorms and the roads never ever looked like this it's a, it's what I mean. Well, they don't use salt. Well, wait a minute. They get all just as much, if not more, snow than we get here. 
what are they doing differently there? Because I was able to drive around. They're wisely investing their money. <laughs> you know, it's a, I, I when don't. you don't buy cheap material for the starting point, it tends to last longer. Yeah. If you buy cheap crap to start with, then you're just gonna have to continue to repair and continue to repair. But apparently, in those states, they said, "Hmm, what's gonna save us money in the long run? Let's shell out a little extra to start, and then we'll be good in the long run." Yeah. <laughs> well. I've got I've got a complaint here on the on the your view letters to the editor on the Erie Times. Apparently, some people were uh, here visiting, and they witnessed a uh, mother, you know, a family, and they witnessed the mother. This is between June 14th and 15th on Presque Isle at one of the beaches. They witnessed a you know them changing the diaper on the child and then taking the diaper and throwing it into Presque Isle Bay. <gasps> You're kidding me! They said that they said something to them, and they just got glared at. Yet they spent the rest of their afternoon watching it float out into the, into the bay. Oh my God! So they had to write into the letter, you know, a letter in because they were like, "Who do we tell this to?" We were hoping that a fish commission person would come by or something. You but know, you, they didn't see nobody, did they? No. So. And again, it's a state-run park. Well, what's amazing is that we have people that would that are willing to do this. You know what I mean? And not even think about it or, or think, why should you get involved with what I'm doing? Well, when everything in the bay dies <laughs> because it gets polluted. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's amazing. Well, I, I've all, always complained about the amount of money they spend for sand when you've got other parts of the country trying to get rid of sand and you just make deals with them and you get sand all year long for free. There you go. You know, why, why, why can't we do that? Why can't we communicate? we got the Internet now. Because we are a commonwealth. Post out there, hey, we'll come and get the sand. <laughs> Just make a posting right there, you know. Uh, it's going to cost you gas. Yep. Well, you know, the gas prices have gone up. They can't afford it, apparently. Well, with, with, with what they keep trying to, to say every year about the, the sand to begin with, you know. They could be getting it all year long. And, and you know what really, and easing really the cost. drives me nuts? We pay for the sand and, and we ship it in and we put it out there. You've been to the beach. Yep. It's not sand. Well, that depends on where they get it and how much they pay for it. It's not sand. Just call it gravel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, some of it is gravel, but some of it's better than uh, than nothing at all. <laughs> I guess. I wouldn't know. I don't really go to uh, Presque Isle. No, Born you, and raised here, and uh, you drive around it quite a bit. Though. Well, Driving around is very different from getting out and walking along it. <laughs> I can probably count on one hand how many times I've been down to the beach. Well, no, maybe it's two hands, but only one time. Uh-oh. That's that's not a very good eerie Um, It's an honest eerie You don't find many of us. I'm proud of it. <laughs> uh, I see a lot of them walking around, and, and they do their little uh, rollerblading and all that around there. I'm talking about getting out in the supposed sand and walking around on the beach. Oh, that's Not the an... little uh, pathways they have with that have been uh, uh, cemented or paved or whatever. And even then they don't do that. They're Even then they're walking in the street anyway. <laughs> that You know, that's one thing that drives me nuts. Uh-oh. You want to get into talking about stuff. That drives me up a wall. Apparently we found a button for Danielle. It's a big button. And you know what? I used to say that it was just the kids, and it's not. I see so many adults doing it this day, these days, and, and it drives me up a wall. Who has been out driving around? Doesn't matter where in the city you drive. Doesn't matter if they have sidewalks or they don't have sidewalks. You are having people in the middle of the stinking street walking. No, and, and I, Like I said, you say, oh, it's just kids being kids. You know, all oh, they're punks in the way... It's not. You have got so many stinking adults. This city's worried about getting money. Freaking start ticketing all of these jaywalking people walking in the street, and you could easily rack up some money. They're caught. They're potentially causing accidents and hazards and stuff. And they're teaching their kids too that it's okay just to go ahead and break yep. the law and do it because it's against the law to be walking out in the middle of the street. Well, then I like when when you when it, you really have the right of way to go because they have a red that they're not supposed to cross, and then they start crossing anyway. And then you start coming up on them, and they flip you off, and they walk slower. 
oh, and, yeah. and you're like, well, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm not doing anything wrong here. I'm just trying to get to where I'm going. <laughs> oh yeah, but it, it drives me nuts. And then in the winter time, it's it's you would it's just as bad because it's like the roads are snow covered. You look, sidewalks are completely shoveled or or snow blowers were used and clean paths. No, let's walk in the street. Yep, let's get let's walk down the middle of the street to make it harder because by then there's I only mean, one passed, lane down the street what anyway. What was the whole point in passing that thing that if you didn't keep your sidewalks clean from snow shoveled or, or taken care of if, that they would find you? Gonna they would it. find the homeowners or the renters or whomever for not having that clear because that's supposed to be open. So there are no problems with people having to walk in the street. And it doesn't matter. I think we should be going after these people that are walking in the middle of the street because the poor homeowners and the renters are the ones getting screwed. Yep. I Sorry, agree. That was my little hot topic. <laughs> that really just peeves me. Well, it, it, it the amazing thing is is that the parents are teaching the children these bad habits. It's just like we've we've discussed when you drive around and you do something stupid in the car, your child's watching, your yep. child's learning. You know, and then you can't understand why your child drives the way that they do. Well, they learn from you. Yep. So, you know, you need to pay attention to what you're doing and, and not try to run people over and be the first one in line and, and every just common courtesy. I don't say let everybody who tries to cut in front of you go out in front of you because they're probably in sometimes being completely rude because they're trying to cut in. But at the same time, you 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 lose you use a little bit of courtesy when you're out driving. And, it doesn't and, exist anymore. People have no common decency for their fellow person. Well, my little trip to Cleveland, I was where the road splits for uh, 271 and 90. By the time I realized it, I was trying to get back over on the 90 side, and it was already backed up because everybody was trying to get into Cleveland. And I literally waited five minutes and then just finally had to cut somebody off. And then they started honking their horn at me, so I waved to them like I knew them. I was like, oh, hi, thank you, you know, <laughs> in the whole nine yards. But I, I literally sat on the highway on the lane for the 271 because it was two lanes over there. I'm literally sitting at a dead stop trying to get over into the 90 side, but nobody wants to let me over. It must have been 20, 30 cars past me. You know, no they just rode bumper, bumper to it's bumper. It's not like you were just trying to cut everybody off and right. beat them. You patiently waited for a chance. You know, you just and didn't I, realize. I, I honestly missed. You know, the the when I could have gotten over there earlier, I missed it. And the last possible chance I had to get over there is when I tried to. And like I said, I waited five minutes, and then finally I said I could be here all day. I could be here till the end of rush hour. Yep, <laughs> that's just ridiculous. So. But uh, I'm sorry that I had to cut somebody off. I felt bad about it, but at the same time. We got a hellacious storm going on outside. Well, Erie Erie needs to be washed every once in a while. This is true. My car is dirty. <laughs> At least now you can't write on it, wash me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? I hear you. Uh, we uh, were at that. Uh, I don't know if it was a benefit or. If it, was it was. Benefit. It was a benefit for the uh, food pantry. And then it was the hip hop show and prove night. Do you know how it ended up? How they wound up? Did they do good? I mean, I know there was a lot of people there, and it was a good crowd going we've, on. We've actually had a couple of people email, and one person said that uh, Prophet, one of the rappers, the the white rapper that was up there, uh -huh. his name is Prophet. He emailed us telling uh, us that uh, he really wanted to hear the show. He heard that it was aired because somebody heard him on pirate scream oh awesome. so they emailed him and let him know and then uh and then i emailed him back and said yes and then it was rebroadcasted this afternoon at three o'clock i don't know if anybody if anybody but caught did, it you know, did they take in some some good donations for the the food bank i i don't think that the the donations were as great as they were hoping but just the effort you know and the fact that that a lot of people did show up you know is, is really support part of what talent. it's about because you're also there to, to support the hip-hop artists but you know, I, I believe they're, they they probably wish that the the can donation was a little bit larger, but they tried. Well, that's cool. There was a lot of uh, a lot of artists there, uh, a, a variety of of styles as well. Yeah, I I don't know that we were, we made the best uh, team there because we did leave immediately after they were done singing. I know that they probably hung around and, but. Well, the, yeah, it was kind of hard because we both had to be work early in the morning, and then on top of that. 
hip hop isn't really either one of our genres. We really never no. really listened to it that much, and that was probably the most in a row that we ever listened to oh it. Oh my gosh, yes. So that for us, like, what, we were five, we were six kind hours of that we were there. yeah, we were kind of like, uh, well, I think we need to go home and go to bed now. <laughs> Had it overloaded. Yeah, but we had a good time, and everybody seemed to be nice, and everybody seemed to get along. Oh, yeah. So it seemed to be a good show. Now, is there a, a link for them to be able to hear that show again, or is that just something that you'll, you're will you just going to start playing the artists that... Uh, well, hopefully... Some of, some of the artists, I guess I should say, that were there. I know you've received some of their music. Yeah, they're, they're already being played. And uh, we, as far as the show, probably... Hopefully we'll be able to do another show somewhere else. And uh, move on. I mean, we'll always have that show. I don't know if it'll be put in the archives or not. I'd have to talk to our webmaster, Bob. Ah, I see. He he probably has the ability to do that. I just don't know if he has the time. <laughs> you hear that, Bob? <laughs> webmaster Bob? My bad. Mm-hmm. Well, we also we also call him Brother Bob. So and then just to, just to let you know, on the Rock Erie Awards, yes. the uh, train wreck show um, hired commercial. Is now ranked like 191 on the charts out of at least a thousand. Really? Yeah, all of them are at least in the top 200. All three of our commercials on the on the Rock Erie charts. That's awesome. So go to RockErie.com and and type in uh, Train Wreck Show, and uh, you should be able to pull up three commercials on there and then uh, listen to them, and you'll make us higher on the charts. There you go. <laughs> and if you enjoy them, tell other people so they'll listen. And we can climb higher. <laughs> there you go. Be cool to take a be cool to take a train wreck show commercial to number one on a on a rock chart. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat that. So what else we got going on? Well, I don't know. We we tomorrow is. Uh, oh, I just blanked out. Charlie's son. I do not Uh-oh. recall. Oh, I just I just blanked Isaac. out. Isaac, there you go. Danielle recovers. <laughs> is tomorrow is his birthday. So Charlie is preparing their yard for the birthday party. I don't think Charlie looked outside and checked the forecast. Well, today. hopefully he got his yard done earlier. Because uh, there's trees a swaying, rain coming down like balls of hail, and lots of lightning with some thunder. <laughs> Again, typical eerie weather. However, not so good for yard work. <laughs> well, hopefully by 6 o'clock, or actually by the time this will air, it'll be after 9 o'clock. They uh, will have everything done. One does hope. <laughs> You're listening to the train wreck show on the pirate scream. Uh, you're, you have Danielle and uh, Bob. Danielle is uh, the, normally a couch guest, but today she is like a, a co-host. And uh, right now we're going to go into our break, and we'll see you on the other side. This is the pirate scream, pirate internet radio. Peace out. 